this week on Down on Fire, right here on Hi TV, I'm super happy to have someone who I've known for many, many years. He has brought fashion, he has brought style, he has brought dance, he has brought... This week on Down on Fire, right here on Hi TV, I'm happy to have a guest who I've known for many years. It could be hair, it could be style, it could be dance, it could be conquering Everest. He has done it all and once again, he takes the biggest step to reach all the way to the pinnacle. So let's wish him all the very best and let me speak to Johan on Down on Fire. No sorry, As I told you, he is ready to conquer it all over again. With me, I have Johan, and uh, from beauty to fitness, this man does a few things. To start things off, I've been trying to get him on the show for a long time. It's not that he doesn't want to be on the show. It's just that he's too busy doing things. Yeah, it's just been a bit Just hectic. say that. Don't say just, that. Just I just <laughs> Don't say the truth. It might be painful for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so <laughs> Johan, I got to know him many years ago. Uh, I think because of your dancing, no, because of your hair and the Probably salon that you the hair industry yeah. and then, and then I came yeah. to know that you dance. Yeah. Then I also got to know that you like to climb things and you were like running all over the mountains climb in Sri Lanka. As in, as in mountains, <laughs> yeah. So your passion for climbing, let's start off that. That sounds really bad, but anyway. Um, I meant the innocent climbing. Started off here in Sri Lanka, you had your own team and you all used to just... Yeah, so I used to actually go... In my small days, I used to go mm. with my dad and he used to take me and we used to go climbing, we used to conquer different areas in Sri Lanka mm. that people uh, used to not challenge. Yes. Yeah, that was a bit hard and people never challenged it. But uh, later on, after I did all that... <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> after I did that, uh, then I went on further mm. to uh, climb mountains that was outside. We met a group, we built up a group. Mm. And uh, that's how it all started off. And then I thought I'd take on more of a challenge. Now, that was your start to all what you did in terms of climbing. And then how did you get into this, uh, your industry, what you are really successful in, which is amazing, because you have sustained uh, quality. That's what's amazing about it. So tell me about your salon. And I remember the stories that you told me how back in the days when you started off at Crestcat, you let all the tubes show and you painted and it all. World Trade Center. World Trade Center, yes, there you go. Yes, that's right, as soon as they opened. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was new. I wanted it to be very... Uh, edgy. Edgy. Yeah. Yeah, something different. Uh, and then, of course, I started off on my own after mm. that. And I had the cutting station. I, I came up with the brand cutting station. Mm. And it's been 20 years. And you all have now cut all over the places. So you're cutting in Australia, you guys are cutting in Candy. Candy is still on, right? No, I don't have a salon in Candy. Okay. So I have four in Sri Lanka. Oh, wow, okay. Two in Melbourne and one in the UK. All right, because lately I saw a post when you're a Sri Lankan, you find a Sri Lankan place That's right, somewhere yeah. in Australia. It was really cute. But I remember how passionate you were when you were opening in Candy because it was big for Candy at that That's time right, to yeah. open like a... Yeah, we went with a new concept. We tried to bring in a new concept to Candy, but of course, uh, Candy is a bit of a different, difficult yeah, market to course, handle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they don't like change. Mm. But uh, we ran it for a while mm. and then I decided that I needed to concentrate more in oh, Colombo. Yeah. Yeah. So now this is just one of the reasons why we're doing this interview is also the fact that it's hot story. Because Johan did conquer Everest in my opinion uh, a few years ago, just two years ago. And in, like, you know, when you're just 400 feet away, you're just shocked to know that meters. you have to come back. Four meters away. Yes. Yeah. You're just shocked to know that you have to come yeah. back. That feeling, how was it? Not to drain you about it, but yet just to... <laughs> no, it's, it's something that's very difficult to put into words. Um, I was obviously devastated at that mm. point because physically there was absolutely nothing wrong with me to go forward. Yeah. But uh, circumstances. Circumstances were such it was a malfunction in my oxygen tank or a mistake by somebody that was made, and it was completely beyond my control. Mm. So I had to turn back, and uh, it was life threatening. If I didn't turn back, there was a chance that I wouldn't come back. Mm. And that was a decision that I had to make. And, and I, this is also soon after the movie Everest came out and everyone <laughs> had the freedom to convince him not to go. Like, really? Because they portrayed it so realistically and it was... But it's very real. The movie, after we went, 
and we experienced it and we came back, we realized that everything was so real about the movie. Really? Are there actually people just... There are dead bodies there. There are, there are over 250 dead bodies there. And we can yeah. bring them down? No, you can't. Beyond Camp 3 is very difficult. And they're going to just be there forever? Yeah, that's their resting place. And like in that form? Yes, yeah, so it's minus 50 or 60 up yeah. there. So that's and like everything freezes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So they're there. They're there and you know, they, they get covered to the snow and then they surface during a certain period of time. And they're preserved right throughout. Did you, see, did you see these? No, I didn't see. Fortunately, this, this time, the, the last time we went, there was a lot of snow and they were quite uh, well buried. buried. Oh, okay. But uh, saying that, I did see people pass away. In your team? Not in my team itself, but people who were climbing with us who passed away. Mm. And that was devastating. Of course. Absolutely because devastating. Sometimes do you ever wonder why do you have to put yourself to this challenge? <laughs> I think I'm going to let that question be answered after the break. Do stick around, this is Done on Fire right here on High TV. Yeah, you have to get water to boil. What are you putting with that? Yes, that that's just that's for the effect. Have... <laughs> <laughs> just to heat the place up a bit. <laughs> but actually the water. Welcome back to the show. So we're in conversation with Johan, especially about his journey all the way back to the Everest once again. So I asked him why does he actually put himself through this? So that's going to be the first question before we get into what we're going to cook today. Why do you put yourself through this? Well, it's, I, <laughs> it's something that's in you. It's really? It's something very difficult to explain, but it's something that's in you and it's a passion. It's that a never scared you, the last time experience. But, but you know, the if thing I, is, if, I, oh, sorry. <laughs> if I said that I, it didn't scare me or it doesn't scare anybody, I think that's a lie. Yeah, I think everybody has a bit of fear about going there because of the reality. Little bit? I'm scared <laughs> for you. <laughs> I know everybody's scared for, for yeah. us who go there. But um, I think it's something, it's a desire, it's a passion. Mm. And uh, it's something that you're in, like, like racing car drivers. Yeah, they know it's risky. It's, a, it's that drive. Exactly. Okay. You have that yearning in you, that desire that you want to go and do it. Yeah. And you know what's amazing is the fact that Johan said it with a smile throughout, even when I met him last time. He was, you were not disappointed and also your finger was really risked. Like, yeah. it's like, it, it, that's your gold there, you know. This is what your talent is based on. That was one of the reasons I decided to turn back and come back fast as well. Because I had, the, it, I had to risk losing my finger and I couldn't take that chance because that is my life. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I decided to come back and uh, there you go. Here. So the journey begins. Well, if you want to support Johan, you can always follow him on his Facebook page. And also, a step is just a hundred rupees. It's more than the fact of giving the hundred. I think it's to know that you are by his side through this journey, and we sort of all rallied behind you. And it's, it, I think that's the feeling that a lot of people get when they actually do it. I think even for me, Danu, I think it's uh, more than just contributing the 100 rupees, actually to know that everybody's backing me and they're going with me, especially yeah. because I'm going alone. That is true. I think uh, to know that the whole of Sri Lanka is going to be backing me, climbing with me, yeah. lit meta literally, you know. Um, yeah. Um, the spirit is there. Exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, to know that they're, they're there all the way, mm. you know, that they're encouraging you. And uh, that gives you a lot of strength as well. All right. That's something that I'm looking forward to. But apart from this, Johan is actually a good mad one. <laughs> can crack a good joke, can laugh at himself. And also we have had like hyena laughs going off because that's what he brings out in people. Now before we get to that, what are you cooking today? So, I've been um, preparing for a while <laughs> because it was Dano who was coming. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he's very demanding. Yeah, you have kept water to boil. What are you putting with that? No, so that's that's just for the effect. <laughs> <laughs> just to heat the place up a bit. <laughs> but actually, the water is for the couscous. So I'm going to ah, make couscous. Ah, right, right. Um, tempered with bacon and uh, sun dried tomatoes. Oh, you caught me there with the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, right now, I'm doing a salad. Okay. It's going to be rocket, watercress, um, cherry tomatoes and uh, steamed prawns. All right. Johan actually cooks really well, and that's a little secret that uh, he has shared with me before. The, but this is the first time I'm eating what you're cooking, right? Really? Yeah. I think... I, have, I would have eaten? I think you have. Yeah, I'm sure I would have. Yeah. But he, he's actually a good cook, so it's just putting both together. So tell me about your hairdressing industry. Let's speak about 
good things. You know, I'm wishing you well to go to Everest and that's about it. If I was your mother, I would have chained you to a chair and said, you shut up and sit there and wait. My mother but, didn't accept it for a long time, but, but now she has no choice. Yes, you know, stubborn child. <laughs> but tell me a little bit about um, your hairdressing career. So you started off under Ramani. Yes. And that journey has been slow, steady. And how did you feel that your heart is there? So hairdressing was something that I was very, very passionate about okay. from my small days. In the sense, I was fascinated with it. Because there were not very many male hairdressers, mm. right, at that time. And uh, I used to get hold of my grandmother. My grandmother was oh, my model. So I know. <laughs> but she was so patient. She used to sit there and let me do things with her hair. Uh. And finally, at the end of it, it's in one big knot. And poor thing, she suffers trying uh. to take it out. But she let me do it over and over yeah. again. And uh, then waiting for my level results, I got the chance to work at Ramani's okay. for a short time. And of course, I never wanted to turn back. Mm. That was it. And his success of, you know, his story of all the hairstyles that he has worked in, uh, and the models he has worked with, the brides he has worked with, the designers he has worked with, I think it all came to life when he did this extraordinary show, <laughs> which actually the high covered as well. Brilliant. I think, how much did you work on it? I think we worked for about a year on that show, or a little more than a year. Because the whole planning process, it was one of the biggest productions ever done here. I know. 145 models. And the costumes were literally legit. Like, you could see the Victorian era come alive. It was that good. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to create. I wanted yeah. to create the whole story yeah. on stage. And, and you were in your black and white outfit. Wow, yeah. not bad, though, no? Good memory. <laughs> thank you, thank you. People say that. All right, so this rocket is being cut. Now, is this yes. something that you normally prepare at home? Uh, yes, I actually... Or oh, is it just when the VIPs come? Toasty. It's for the VIPs yes. as well. <laughs> but I also, also try to eat healthy, so uh, I like doing salads. Yes. So I do all kinds of salads. Uh, this show is not see. helping me, man. I've never, like, stopped my curves. <laughs> to a point that in this shoot, they actually said, Danu, you can't move. There's no space for you on camera. <laughs> Maybe we should, we should start getting you some healthy food. Yeah, and also, like, I should start climbing every mountain. That might be a good idea. Actually, it is. Yeah. No, okay, I'm just going to wait until the salad gets done. Yeah, we are. We are almost through with that. We'll put this back and uh, chop up some of the cherry tomatoes quickly. All right. Yeah. you should be doing this for me. Uh, uh, I can, but I, they told me not to move. Is there anything else that I can okay. <laughs> but I, I'm still admiring this uh, rice boiling, no, the water boiling at the back. Can I put something into this? Uh, well, actually, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think just leave it for me to do. <laughs> I it take seems that like chance with you. this is the story of my life. Even my sister doesn't yeah. trust me in the kitchen. All right, we're going to get into a break. When we do come back on the other side, you're going to see the finished product. Johan's magic comes alive. And also, do not forget, if you want to support Johan, all you have to do is just check out on Facebook how you can contribute for each and every step that he's going to take to keep the flag up there. And it's our national flag, and we should just rally around him so that we can promote and support him more. We'll see you after the break. You are in the public eye ever since you climbed the first time, because I don't think Sri Lanka was... <laughs> Welcome back to the show. It's Done on Fire right here on High TV in conversation with Johan, who has actually cooked up a storm. So just give it, giving a breakdown. This is couscous with bacon and sun-dried tomatoes. Yes. Correct. Never with coriander. Okay. This uh, we have some um, cauliflower. The baked cauliflower, baked Thanks. cheese cauliflower. Help me, so I uh, <laughs> know these things. But you, you were know helping me, no, Danu. You should know what uh, you're cooking. This I can pour the topping for you. Yes. That I can do. So this, what is this? Uh, that's rocket and watercress salad with steamed prawns. Am I good at pouring this? Tomatoes. Yes. Am I going to pour the whole thing? No, I think you're fine. Oh, you have to know. Yeah. So fine. Just get very really excited about these things. And there's pork ribs. Yes. Yeah. So uh, is this what you're known for? Your friends know you for this? Yeah, I keep changing it around, oh. but I like doing things. I like clearly. <laughs> it's like come for dinner. What do we have? The same thing. <laughs> no, no. I, I like uh, doing my own thing. Okay. So these are things that I just toss up uh, as and when I feel. All right. Depends on the mood. Cool. All right. So let's speak a little bit about the blunders of your life. I'm going to just dig into your this thing. Absolutely. This looks so good. 
Yeah, I want you to eat with me. The whole point is not for me to put on weight by myself. Yes, okay. We have been all trying right. to gain weight, no, before you climb the mountain. Well, we're supposed to. I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> How much should you be? There's no, there's no particular weight limit like that. Okay. But they say to have a, a, a layer of fat or whatever they call it. I'm perfect for Everest. I might remain there. It's a kind of insulation. Yeah, not so much. No. Yeah, that's a little hard to carry <laughs> carry when you go up. But on the other hand, you tend to lose so much of weight. It yeah. might be good for you. I'm, even if I do the first step, I'm sure I'll, I'll be. I think I would have done something. No, very unlikely. I'm going, oh, but sorry. Uh, I don't know. Very uh, unlikely that I'll even make it to the first one. Then really? I know you too well. <laughs> True. And, uh, I'm not going to be happy with all those living conditions that I'm forced to. Exactly, and looking at the way you um, <laughs> are indulging in the <laughs> in the food here, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I won't be surprised so if you don't. What do you get to eat? Um, the food is actually quite good. Oh, really? Yeah, who, who at base it? camp. Because there's a whole cook tent that's set up ah, at base camp. Okay. Okay. And they actually uh, give you good food. They give you a very balanced meal. Protein, mm. carbohydrates, oh, wow. and all that. Uh, but as you go up, the cooks get burned. <laughs> <laughs> there are no cooks. You don't find the cooks. They disappear. They give you these little packets oh, okay. that you open out like in the military and you eat that and that's that's, that's horrible. Oh really? Yeah, it's horrible. But you, you can't like pack your sini sambola and all and go. No, you can, but you can't take you mean, it don't off. forget that you have to carry it. <laughs> <laughs> Not like taking it. Yeah. All right, so, so I'm gonna dig in. Please do. Um all right, let's first try the Tell me what you think. Mm. That's love of cheese. <laughs> That's really nice. And let me try your couscous because I have not tried couscous with bacon. Yeah, you can it's do different flavorings. You can put different flavors into it. Mm. Yeah. Actually, the crew here has been trying to figure out his recipe. <laughs> so it was a broth that you stewed it in, no? Yes. <laughs> um, if you're wondering why is there a dog behind us, obviously there's food. <laughs> That's the reason. All right, tell me about some of the blunders that you have faced in your life, and especially with hair, you have tricky clients. How do you deal with them? Well, do you work with your patients? I think our industry is something that brings in a lot of patients. You've got to have a lot of patients uh, to be in this industry. Mm. And uh, it's how you deal with each of the clients as well. You know, people are very demanding, and it's understandable mm. because it's your hair or your face. Mm. Yeah, and you are very particular about it. But uh, sometimes there are other people who are very, very demanding and who want things that are not really right for them. <laughs> so then you need to, you need to be, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, you've got to be tactful <laughs> about the whole thing as well. Yeah, listen, girl, you ain't too, uh, you ain't too pretty for that. <laughs> <laughs> not that way. I'm glad you're not in here addressing. <laughs> Oh. But uh, yes, to, to be more tactful and be more politically correct when you mm. are doing things. Uh, but then you tend to build up a rapport also with your client, mm. a long-term rapport. Yeah, and they tend to trust you. Mm. And so, then they let you be. Yes. Okay. But you're always known for your short haircuts. You well, somehow uh, that's not true actually. <laughs> I've been told that you somehow will convince the ladies, give it a try. But you've always made the right choices for them. Yes, uh, sometimes, <laughs> well, most of the time, I try to tell them what is right for them. Mm. But people actually uh, uh, do trust you, mm. your judgment as well. But hair is something that they're very frightened of. Yeah, true. Yeah. Because so, it might just take a long time to grow. Exactly. Yeah. But then once you build up that confidence with them, as your hairdresser, as your advice, as their advisor, you know, to hair and beauty, then they tend to take that chance with you. Mm. Yeah, but uh, being just a hairdresser of short hair, I don't think that's correct. No, no, <laughs> not off short hair. No way. I know this one lady who spoke about you saying that I refused to cut my hair, and he said no. This will suit you so well. He, he forced me and forced me, and I never gave him a chance. At last, I told him just but do it. And likewise, then she fell in love with it, and yeah. ever since. She comes to you, and I know of a girl who underwent a terrible accident, and the f and she had to cut her hair really short because she had long, beautiful hair. And after the accident, the hair wouldn't grow the right way. Do you remember that phone call to you? Yeah. Because I know how much I have heard about how you can style the short hair. So 
she had to come to you and ever since she has been hooked on you. Yeah, yeah and, and there are times that actually I have not let people cut their hair as well. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. because uh, <laughs> I felt that it didn't suit them. Mm. And I advised them and told them, you know, Again, keep your hair long. <laughs> <laughs> this might not work. So, do it works both ways. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, apart from all of this, apart from the Johan that we know, what is it that you want people to know about you? Because um, you are in the public eye ever since you climbed the first time because I don't think Sri Lanka was... <laughs> apart from the Johan that people have now come to understand, because after your climb, I think more people got to know you, more people came to hear your voice, yeah. to share your experience. And also, I think you inspired them because I, I don't think we can all apply, you know, we're not all going to climb. You know, I'll never do such a stupid thing in my life. I'll be like, no way. <laughs> my family needs me. <laughs> <laughs> my family needs me. That's not right. That's not a stupid thing to no, do. No, no, it's not. But, but it's just, for me, it's just mean, too yeah. scary. I don't think a lot of people will do it. But that opened you to tell a story yes. that inspires people in any way. Like it could be, it could conquer their own Everest. Yeah. So that so here's the thing: when we left, mm. uh, and when we went to do this, when we went to take I it on. I don't think a lot of people were. No, and also we didn't do it, uh, you know, to get fame and to be the first Sri Lankans. Yeah. Right. We did it because we like climbing mountains. And both of you all were like that. Exactly. Yeah. We we found each other, but it so happened that uh, by default mm. we were the first two mm. Sri Lankans, and when we came back. You know, we were amazed at what happened from yeah. the time we landed at the airport. So the from the Prime Minister being there and to welcome us, the press being there. So it was actually amazing mm. to have that kind of response. And ever since, the way people have been inspired and the of way, course. you know, they've been following us, it's, it's really been inspiring for us as well. And to know that we could have done something, mm. that we could give something in return. And now we're going around sharing our story and inspiring the people in the forces, mm. school children, universities. Mm. And uh, that has really been very, very satisfying for us. Yeah. It has really given us a lot of... Uh, and what is know. the most inspiring thing that you have heard out of what you have done in someone's life and you don't even know that you've done it? Well, actually, I think it's to do with students, mm. with a lot of students, because even once when we spoke, uh, when we spoke at uh, the university, mm. one of the, when I told them my story about how I had to turn back, mm. And, uh, you know, I keep telling them it's not about failing, it's making it's the right decision. Yeah, true. One of the lecturers came and told me, you know, it's so relevant to all the students. And especially these days when competition is so high. So high yeah. and the amount of suicide rates in universities. And he compared it to that and I thought, wow, you know, I didn't think of it that no. way. But the impact it has on different Because people. it's all about, you know, what's, what I'm going to tell my friends, what I'm going to tell my family, exactly. what I'm going to do, all of that. Yeah, and children who are intimidated in school. Mm. You know, the way they are inspired and they learn lessons out of this. You know, they get the courage and strength. So I think it's been a great journey. To yeah. know that there could be such a change out of Absolutely, all of this. that it has made such a change to society. So um, you can follow Johan's journey number two all the way to Everest and back in one piece, safe and sound. And That's what I wish That's for. That's important. Yeah. That's the most important thing. And I think this whole country wants that for you. They just want you safe. Yes. It's been, it's been amazing, you know, how, how concerned people are. And I know. It has really touched me. And also he was just no. telling his experience about going to the good market when they were asking him, really, why again? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that they don't want you to go because they feel that you have achieved the sky. And for yeah. them, they are like, why put yourself through that? Through the whole process again. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, I wish you all the very best. And all what I can think out of all of this is the fact that it's commendable that if I was you, I would have been shattered. But to know that it's just there and you're going there to catch it again and literally throttle it with your hands and you can. And it's just rewarding to know that you're going to do it. Thank you. And uh, thanks, Johan. I know I made you cook and all. That's the format of the show, so I'm not regretting it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not complaining either because yeah. I love cooking. But it was good. Very good. This cauliflower, I'm taking it home. Um, catch Johan's journey, of course. Do not forget to do that. Johan, thank you so very much. I've known him for years and what's wonderful is the fact that he's so grounded, simple, amazingly talented and so warm to people and I think you have always been that way and I'm so humble that you remain the same. You have known me for Thank a long you. time. No? Yes, for yeah. a long time. Well, at least 15 In, years now. Yes, absolutely. Oh, ancient I feel. <laughs> we'll wrap the show up. We'll see you with another cool episode. Till then you keep smiling. It's a wrap. <laughs>